Hello and welcome to The Reloads, your weekly recap of all of the gaming news and a quick look at what's coming out over the next week. I'm of course Carl and without any further ado, here's what happened. The fallout from the Nintendo Switch event continued to get messy last week, as it was revealed that the Joy-Con grip that comes bundled with the console won't be able to recharge the handheld controllers. Instead, consumers will need to purchase the premium Joy-Con grip that includes a USB port, costing at around £29. Those that don't want to spend the extra cash will need to attach their Joy-Cons to the Switch to recharge them. But to add further frustration to it all, controllers will only charge when the Switch is in handheld mode, and not when it is docked in the TV dock. Hi Nintendo, Carl here. I, I just want to say that I really, really want to sing the praises of the Switch, but uh, you're making it very, very difficult with decisions like these. In politically charged news... Ugh, who cares about politics? All I want to talk about is the games, man! The UK's departure from the EU is already having an effect on gamers whose device of choice is the iPhone. At the start of the week, Apple notified app developers that there would be a 25% increase on prices for apps in the UK App Store. This effectively means that apps from games that were once priced at 79 pence will now be priced at 99 pence, with a similar price hike happening with more expensive apps and in-app purchases as well. Which means if you are outraged by Super Mario Run's 7.99 price, you're going to be outraged by the new 9.99 price. Yay for turbulent economics! Yay! <laughs> Speaking of prices, Zelda fans looking to pick up Breath of the Wild in March had already pointed out the £20 difference in RRP between the Wii U and Switch versions of the game. Well, last week IGN learned exactly what extra features the Switch version will get, such as 900p resolution when in the TV dock, higher quality environmental sounds, and different on-screen icons. Meanwhile, the Wii U version will only render the game at 720p, the same as the Switch when it's in its handheld mode, and that both versions will run at 30 frames per second. So, fancier sounds and 180 extra P's of resolution for 20 quid, although you do have to buy the console, so it's kind of like for 300 quid to get that. But you know what? You get to play an open world Zelda game on the go, anywhere. So, you know what? Forget what I'm talking about. Run free, my Nintendo friends. Just. just. Free. With only 24 hours notice, Valve founder Gabe Newell took part in a Reddit Ask Me Anything over on the comically titled The Gabe and subreddit on Tuesday night. Among the questions he answered were his feelings on Steam creation and how defining quality was tricky, how the biggest flaw of the platform was how it handled customer support, and how his current interest in creating new experiences lies in AI and, I kid you not, brain computer interfaces so we can look forward to Sword Art Online and its huge murder game becoming a reality in the future. Oh, thanks, Gabe. Unsurprisingly, there were questions regarding to another Half-Life title, but Gaben rather skillfully danced his way around them as he always has done. All we can say for sure is that Valve are working on single-player games in some capacity, with Newell hinting that it might be related to the Half-Life universe. Elsewhere, he also made a sarcastic comment about recent anonymous reports that Half-Life 3 was in fact dead, and that he viewed the much-loved series as a series of things he regretted due to his heavy involvement, instead preferring Portal 2 because he wasn't involved in its development. Which is a kind of fair way of looking at it because, you know, Portal 2 didn't have a zen level. Ugh. In a rare instance of happy news in the world of development, Ubisoft have announced that they've acquired freestyle games from Activision. Renamed Ubisoft Leamington, the team behind DJ Hero and last year's Guitar Hero Live will work with Ubisoft's other international studios to help develop AAA games. In other studio news, Wizards of the Coast, who currently own the Dungeons & Dragons license, have announced that they're opening a digital studio. In a press release on their official website, they explained that they want to create bigger and better experiences, even going as far as mentioning MMOs and augmented reality for their future plans. I guess you could say they rolled for initiative, huh? 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 Oh come on, that was a really good one! Oh, some people do not appreciate good comedy. Nintendo once again hit the internet with a rather sudden direct livestream, this time dedicated to all things Fire Emblem. 
Well, we got a slightly longer look at Fire Emblem Warriors, the Switch title that was announced during the console's event earlier this month. There was also a surprise announcement that it would be coming to the 3DS. We also got details of two other titles, the first being Fire Emblem Echoes, Shadows of Valencia for the 3DS, a reimagined take on the Fire Emblem Gaiden game from 1992 that was only released in Japan. The third game shown was Fire Emblem Heroes, the free-to-play smartphone title that's been teased since last year. Featuring new and familiar faces, players will be able to level up heroes as they battle their way through a story mode or against other players. The big twist is that it's coming out on Android devices on February 2nd, while the official word on the iOS release is that it's coming soon. Yeah, yeah, fighting and levelling up my beloved characters is all well and good, but let's be honest, there's going to be a riot if there isn't any sort of romance minigame. Unless Nintendo are planning on selling that as DLC because they know everyone will want it. Ah, I see what you're doing there, Nintendo. Very sneaky. Mm. Please note that these are the theories of a deranged person who should never be looked at for advice or anything at all. In yet more developer news, EA have announced that Kim Swift, who is instrumental in developing Portal and the Left 4 Dead series, will be joining EA Motive Studios as a design director. It means that she joins up with studio head Jade Raymond, who led development on Assassin's Creed 1 and 2, and while the Motive Studios' new IP remains a mystery, we do know that they will be assisting Visceral Games with their new Star Wars title. You know, the one that's currently being written by a certain Amy Hennig of Uncharted fame. Wow, that is some badass talent in those names right there. But I'm assuming, based on their inclusion, that uh, the new Star Wars game, right, is going to feature a wisecracking lead, yeah, that has to take down a rogue AI in a stealthy manner using physics-based puzzles, yeah? Yeah? Oh, oh, fine, I'll keep my legitimate ideas to myself then, shall I? <laughs> and finally... FreeGem Games have been using their free-to-play title Robocraft to raise funds for a friend of the studio called Kaylee, who suffers from a highly aggressive and difficult-to-treat brain tumour condition called Diffuse Intrinsic Pontine Gloma. To help raise the £200,000 needed for some groundbreaking treatment that will help improve her quality of life, FreeGem Games have promised to add 40 pence to their donation for every completed match of Robocraft up until Thursday, January the 26th. You can check out the progress by heading over to the Free Jam Games Twitch channel or download the game on Steam for free to help get involved in this worthwhile cause. And of course you can find links to all of those stories by hitting the link in the description box below, so be sure to check that out if anything has piqued your interest. But now it's time to take a look at some of the highlights of games that are coming out this week. The week kicks off with the PS4 port of The Turing Test, a first-person puzzle title from Bulkhead Interactive. Despite strong similarities to Portal and the Talos Principle, I felt the Turing Test shined with its thought-provoking narrative and well-crafted puzzles when I reviewed it on PC last year. It's one that I absolutely recommend if you are after a game that will get you thinking, and possibly swearing. The long-running Tales of series also returns this week with the latest instalment, Tales of Bazaria. Assuming the role of Velvet, players will harness the power of her demon form to enact revenge against those who betrayed her years ago. Early reports suggest that series fans will be right at home with this one as the story is top-notch, even if the gameplay hasn't evolved much from previous entries. Meanwhile, the long-awaited return of the Resident Evil series finally arrives this week. Featuring an all-new cast, the game puts players in the shoes of Ethan Winters as he looks for his missing wife. The beginning hour demo has impressed many with its first-person perspective, as well as showcasing how the gameplay mechanics hark back to earlier Resident Evil games in that it's more about survival than action. If you do end up getting this one, I wish you luck in dealing with the incredibly creepy Baker family. Finally, the ridiculously titled Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Prologue hits the PS4 this week, allowing gamers to experience three of the spin-off titles previously unavailable on home consoles. While back cover Chi is effectively a huge cinematic cutscene, both Dream Drop Distance HD and Birth by Sleep A Fragmentary Passage are playable, filling in the backstory for those brave enough to try and understand it. Perhaps most excitingly is that Birth by Sleep includes technology used in Kingdom Hearts 3, giving fans a taste of what's to come from the next main instalment. And of course, that's it for this week's Reload. If you haven't already, be sure to check out Matt's review of Rise and Shine. And of course, we've got our podcast Game Buzz over on SoundCloud and iTunes, so be sure to check those out. And of course, we've got highlights from that podcast, or last week's podcast, where we discussed 
this weird VR dating advice simulator thing, which is just deeply, deeply creepy. What I'm trying to say is, I want you to hit the button right there to hit subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date with our videos as they are published. But that's it for now. I will see you next week. See you then. Bye-bye.